The Canadian English Dialect Canadian English The Universal Declaration of Human Rights All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Greetings and phrases. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good night. Bye. Goodbye. See you later. Yes. No. Maybe. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Vocabulary. Chesterfield. Double Double. Hoser. Keener. Kerfuffle. Mickey. Newfie. Postal Code. Runners. Tuke. Toover. Washroom. Looney. Toony. Clicks. Homo Milk. Zed. Hydro. Nanaimo Bar. Mountie. Pronunciation. Air. All. Apple. About. Bath. Better. Body. Book. Brother. Butter. Car. Cat. Cheese. Dark. Day. Daughter. Dog. Earth. Example. Face. Family. Father. Fire. Friend. Full. Garage. Good. House. Idea. Important. Jewelry. Juice. Kitchen. Knowledge. Laugh. Light. Like. Mate. Milk. Mother. Moon. Mountain. Mouth. Name. Natural. New. Night. Ocean. Oil. Old. Orange. Organization. Paper. Place. Radio. Rare. School. Sister. Sun. Star. Station. Sun. Things. Thunder. Uniform. Video. Village. Water. Young. Zed. The Wren. The Wren used to have his nest in the car shed. Once the old ones had both flown out, they had wanted to get something to eat for their young, and had left the little ones all alone. After a while, Father Wren returns home. What's happened here? He says. Who's harmed you, children? You're all terrified. Oh, Dad, they said. Some big boogeyman came by just now. He looked so fierce and horrible. He stared into our nest with his big eyes. That scared us so. I see, Father Wren says. Where did he go? Well, they say. He went down that way. Wait, Father Wren says. I'll be after him. Don't you worry now, children. I'll get him. Thereupon he flies after him. When he comes around the bend, it is the lion who is walking along there. But the wren is not afraid. He alights on the lion's back and starts scolding him. What business do you have coming to my house? He says, and terrifying my children. The lion pays no attention to it and keeps walking. That makes the little loudmouth berate him even more fiercely. You have no business being there, I tell you. And if you come back, he says, well then you'll see. I don't really want to do it he says, and finally lifts one of his legs, but I'd break your back with my leg in a second. Thereupon he flies back to his nest. There you go, children, he says. I've taught that one a lesson. He won't be back. Sample text. Mrs. Rachel Lynde lived just where the Avonlea main road dipped down into a little hollow, fringed with Adler's and ladies' eardrops and traversed by a brook that had its source away back in the woods of the old Cuthbert place. It was reputed to be an intricate, headlong brook in its earlier course through the woods, with dark secrets of pool and cascade, but by the time it reached Lynn's Hollow it was a quiet, well-conducted little stream, for not even a brook could run past Mrs. Rachel Lynn's door without due regard for decency and decorum. It probably was conscious that Mrs. Rachel was sitting at her window, keeping a sharp eye on everything that passed, from brooks and children up, and that if she noticed anything odd or out of place she would never rest until she had ferreted out the whys and wherefores thereof. There are plenty of people, in Avonlea and out of it, who can attend closely to their neighbor's business by dint of neglecting their own, 
but Mrs. Rachel Lynde was one of those capable creatures who can manage their own concerns and those of other folks into the bargain. She was a notable housewife. Her work was always done and well done. She ran the sewing circle, helped run the Sunday school, and was the strongest prop of the Church Aid Society and Foreign Missions Auxiliary. Yet, with all this, Mrs. Rachel found abundant time to sit for hours at her kitchen window, knitting cotton warp quilts she had, knitted sixteen of them, as Avonlea housekeepers were wont to tell in odd voices, and keeping a sharp eye on the main road that crossed the hollow and wound up the steep red hill beyond. Since Avonlea occupied the triangular peninsula jutting out into the Gulf of St. Lawrence, with water on two sides of it, anybody who went out of it or into it had to pass over that hill road and so run the unseen gauntlet of Mrs. Rachel's all-seeing eye.